We're going to spend the next several lessons expanding your repertoire of things you can take the derivative of. Right now you know that the derivative of a constant is 0, and you know the derivative of x is 1. The next simplest function is x squared. What's the derivative of x squared? That's what we're going to do here. The x squared itself can be interpreted as the area of a square of side x. That's why I've drawn this square, this blue square over here on the left. And we know that the derivative is the instantaneous rate of change. So the question is, what's the instantaneous rate of change of the area of a square compared to the side? Now you might be wondering, what do you mean rate of change? I mean, nothing's changing. But you have to think about the square changing its size as a result of the side changing its size, like this. If the side gets bigger, the square gets bigger, so the area becomes more. And the real question is, what's the change in that area? And what's the rate of change? And in particular, the instantaneous rate of change. We had some labels here, delta x, standard notation for the change in something, delta is a Greek letter, delta x means the change in x. So here we're labeling these two sides that changed by the amount delta x. The other two sides also change by that amount. So this is the new area we, we're talking about. We also want to point out that this is the case where delta x is positive. If delta x is negative, you get a smaller square, and everything we're going to say here has to work in that case too, and I'll let you convince yourself when we're done that it, it works just fine in that case. So what's our strategy? We're trying to figure out the instantaneous rate of change of the area compared to the side. So we do three things. We do it three steps. First of all, we try to figure out the actual change itself, not the rate of change, but the change in area in terms of delta x. Once we've done that, we'll figure out the average rate of change, how delta a, the change in a, compares to delta x. And then finally, we take the limit as delta x approaches 0, and the average rate of change in the limit is the derivative, the thing we're looking for, because a is x squared. So it'll be convenient for us to break up this change in area into three parts because now we can easily talk about these the areas of these three rectangles. Here you've got this long one on the top, side x times delta x height, that's the area. This one also has same size, delta x times x. This one's smaller, the two sides are delta x delta x. Let me just color these, color these in so we can see them. I'm coloring both of these green because they have the same area, and I'll color the corner also a different color. So we've got these three rectangles all together make up the change in the area. So we can write down that the change in the area is equal to the area of the top rectangle plus the area of the side rectangle and the area of the corner. And how much is that? Well, we just said the two green ones are each x times delta x, the yellow one is delta x times delta x, or delta x squared. Now, here's the important point. The green ones are much bigger than the yellow one. And you can see that even more if we shrink the rectangle down a little bit, like this. Here, delta x is very small, but the green ones are still kind of big, because they have one dimension equal to x, even though the other dimension is shrinking. That dimension equal to x always stays the same. The yellow one in the corner, well, you can hardly see it anymore. Now the point is that as delta x goes to zero, the area is almost entirely made up of the green rectangles, not the yellow rectangle. The delta a is wavy equal sign. If you haven't seen that before, it means approximation. The delta a, the change in the area, is pretty much the area of the top and the side rectangles, especially as delta x goes to zero. The closer delta x is to zero, the better this approximation is. And as we've already said, those two areas are the same. They're both x times delta x altogether. This is 2x delta x. Delta a is pretty much 2x times delta x, and that pretty much is more and more accurate the closer delta x gets to zero. Now, we mentioned the strategy before. This is the rate, of, sorry, this is the change, the actual change. We want the rate of change, delta a compared to delta x. So we divide both sides by delta x. Delta A over delta X, divide this side by delta X, all we're left is with 2X. So the average rate of change is pretty darn close to 2X, and it's closer and closer to 2X, the closer you get delta X gets to zero. So that allows us to take the limit. When delta X approaches zero, the average rate of change, the limit of that is 
the actual instantaneous rate of change, the derivative, and that's equal to 2x. 2x is not affected by delta x. The wavy equal sign becomes an equal sign because, as we already said, the closer delta x gets to 0, the better this approximation is. And that's what we were looking for. a was just x squared, the area of the square. So finally, we get the answer to the question we originally posed, namely, that the derivative of x squared is 2x. Now, before we stop here, there's one more thing to say here about this approximation. Did we have to do the approximation? I mean, in this case, we didn't really have to. If we had carried on the exact equality, at this point, we would have delta a is equal to 2x delta x plus delta x squared. Once we divided by delta x and took the limit as delta x approaches 0, we would still get 2x. In fact, that's exactly what we'll do when we do the official proof. That's the video you should watch next, the proof of the derivative of x squared is 2x. So why did I do the approximation right now? In this case, as I said, it would have been easy to carry on without the approximation, but pretty soon we're going to do derivatives where it's not so easy to see how you get from the equality, the exact uh, expression for the change, to the derivative. It would be very useful in those cases to do this kind of approximation, so I want you to start to get used to it. And also to see that really the essence of the change, the reason that the derivative of x squared comes out to be 2x is really because the change is mostly due to the green. It's pretty much due to the fact that the two sides stay big while delta x gets small.